Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Congress and to this uh, conference. My topic will be uh, from the World Happiness Report from the United Nations to the figure of the corporate philosopher. I will uh, um, share my presentation. Here we, we have it. Great. So, uh, the topic is uh, applied uh, philosophy. You have here my email too, if you want to share and to speak uh, a little bit more. And don't forget, you will have all the information in the, in the, in the written article, okay? So, uh, it is with a great pleasure that uh, I received the invitation from the organization of this uh, Congress. 20 years of Lumen, great. Um, so let's start. My presentation, who is Jorge Humberto Dias? I have a PhD in moral and political philosophy. And here I did um, a thesis uh, about uh, uh, philosophical counseling and happiness. Uh, I am professor of ethics, happiness and philosophical counseling at Atlantic University in Portugal and uh, um, at uh, uh, Universidad Vasco de Quiroga in Mexico, um, where I work uh, applied philosophy. I am the coordinator of two postgraduate courses. Um, the first one, Philosophical Counseling for People and Organizations, and the second one, People Management and Organizational Happiness. I am the principal investigator in the research project Perspectives on Happiness, Contributions to Portugal in the World Happiness Report. I am a author of several academic publications on applied philosophy, ethics, philosophical counseling, happiness, education, entrepreneurship, and project methods in several languages, such as Portuguese, English, Spanish, Italian, and uh, uh, Russian. I am the director of the Philosophical uh, Counseling Services at Project Office. Um, so, my definition of uh, happiness, um, here you, you can read it. Um, whenever I talk about happiness with uh, an audience that doesn't know my work, I consider it essential to share my, my definition in the beginning, of course. So um, it is more, it is easier to understand what I will talk about and uh, um, then we can compare it with other definitions. Remember this phrase, we are our thoughts. It seems like a phrase attributed to Buddha, remember? So um, Having said this, um, I always like to call attention to some keywords, as you may see in the slide. Uh, and we could stay here for a few hours to explore it, but it is not possible. So uh, consciousness, assesses, and projects, it is the three most important words, keywords in my definition of happiness. Um, if we want to have a theory about happiness, a systematic view, we need to move forward based on the definition. I created a formula. As you can see, it is different from the, <laughs> the Mogavdad formula and the Sanja Lubomirsky formula too. Just to, to name the best known, of course. Um, H means happiness. P means project and C means concretization or achievement, if you prefer. The more and the good projects we have in life, the more possibility we have to be uh, happy. After this, in an article I wrote in 2020, I created uh, this analytical picture of the different versions of happiness that I found. Um, the most complete is happiness 5.0. Um, I present to you now our research Portugal, here in Portugal. This is the, um, the cover of the website. It has been here that I have developed a large part of my 
of my work. Perspectives on happiness, contributions to Portugal in the World Happiness Report from United Nations. Um, we have analyzed uh, the various World Happiness Reports since the first edition in 2012. Let's see what is the criteria um, used for the assessment of happiness in the countries. You can see here point number one and point number two, um, GDP per capita and life expect expectancy. Um, and we can get this, this information uh, with uh, the analysis of national statistics. The point number three, generosity. Uh, it is about self-reported behavior. And uh, the other three, uh, four, five, and six, we get that information about perception service. Uh, so we must know what's happened with social support, corruption perception, and freedom of choices. We can now uh, see which countries have been in the first place, Denmark, Switzerland, Norway, and in the last years, Finland. Uh, here we see the countries that have been in the last place, Togo, Burundi, Republic of Central Africa, uh, Afghanistan in the last two years. Uh, with this map, we learn that happiness is not a geographic issue, as you may see. The green color means the most uh, happy countries and the red color the less happy. Portugal's position adds only two trends. The first one, more negative, from 2012 to uh, 2015. And the, the second one, more positive, up to, to the present, as you may see in the slide. If we analyze the place of Portugal in each of the six variables of the evaluation criteria, we find that three, um, that there are two main reasons to be concerned. The first one is generosity, and the second one is perception of corruption. So we have here two um, ideas to, to elaborate some uh, projects and activities in Portugal. Um, we will see uh, now uh, an important diagnosis of the present done by Jeffrey Sachs in chapter number five um, of the second World Happiness uh, Report. So, what makes a person happy? Some more common answers um, seen by scientific areas, for example, economics, money and consumption, sociology, social support, um, here some examples, family and friends, of course. Um, on psychology, we have some answers to personality, mental health and state of mind. Uh, with more um, activity in positive psychology and my mindfulness. And finally, on philosophy, we have ethics and virtues. So we have here in philosophy the most overlooked dimension today. Um, now we associate the six variables of the evaluation criteria um, used by the report to the four scientific areas. So we can see um, the, the factor of economics. We have GDP per capita, years of healthy life expectancy, and freedom of choice, um, and so on. You, you may see um, each criteria in each uh, scientific field. So let's look to the, to the ethical one which is the most overlooked. So we have to work here and the influence to the perceptions of corruption, the generosity and the freedom of choice. So we have here philosophical information for the countries and for the professionals. Uh, 
as you may see now in these slides, um, economic factors um, have a lesser impact on happiness. So we must uh, work the other ones, the non-economic factors, such as social connections, psychologi psychological balance and uh, virtue. Um, this author, Sachs, marks a key moment, this one, the financial group crisis of Goldman Sachs, which is um, the collapse of ethics, uh, words from Jeffrey Sachs. Um, looking at the American reality, we can see that the results have been better in GDP, money, than in happiness. So, uh, in this uh, specific case of the United States of America, we need to work a little more psychological, ethical and social uh, in happiness, of course. Uh, we have here some consequences. Um, and uh, of course, the decline of social capital, mental well being, and ethical behavior. Um, and what we have seen, um, we have seen uh, sociologists, uh, they are talking about the social ties which are fraying. Um, psychologists, they, they are working practices of psychological well being, has positive effects on happiness. We know a lot of studies about this topic. And finally, ethicists, they have not yet succeeded in putting the issue on the public agenda. Um, now, what is uh, the philosophical contribution uh, on happiness? So, happiness is achieved with an adequate philosophy of life such as controlling instincts, pleasures and materialism, invest in compassion and moderation, study, training and self-discipline. Why bring Aristotle ethical theory to do world work on happiness? Let's look at some characteristics, for example, ethical and psychological naturalism, education, mental training, again, as you may see, and practice of virtue, the habits, and uh, um, virtue brings individual well-being and social harmony. Some essential uh, concepts here, um, for example, uh, virtue is a moderation between excess and deficit, um, concept of emotion, some examples, fear, courage, etc., and the supreme good, uh, it is very important in this uh, theory. Um, happiness is a public issue uh, concerning this uh, uh, theory. So uh, we need to work uh, uh, the state, of course. But uh, what happened in world history, uh, especially in the last centuries? The economic theory of it utility had a great impact, as you may see. Um, authors like Hobbes, Manville and Smith contributed in this kind of work and uh, the definition of utility you may see in this slide is a characteristic of objects related to the production of benefits, advantages, pleasure, happiness uh, and in this uh, topic um, uh, an unfettered by education, of course. Uh, the main consequence of this theory was the creation of another one, uh, more focused on consumption behavior. Therefore, sex considers that we have to um, reapply the virtue ethics model. He sits the, um, he quotes an important reference, the work of Hans Kung. Uh, in this work, we must uh, refer the importance of this declaration. We have here um, a version of 2018. That said, it is possible to define an ethical agenda for the 21st century, create mechanisms to identify ethical values shared by society, 
invest more in public education for ethics um, with the aim of helping people, organizations and countries, public policies to promote actions within the scope of national and international plans, create tools to monitor ethics in organizations and countries, um, and scientific understanding of individual values and social norms about, for example, honesty, trust, compassion, etc. This is all about ethics of virtue, of course. In 2017, DNEV and WORD developed the, rela the relationship between happiness and work, and we have here some variables. For example, the status of work, the type of work, and the characteristics of the workplace. We know having a job impacts 30% on a person's happiness. It seems that intellectual work brings more happiness. More concrete factors that bring happiness, salary, work personal life balance, uh, challenges, autonomy, security, support from colleagues, and career progression. It seems that engagement is low in organizations. It has to be worked on. Uh, what is a good job? Um, we have here some ideas, but uh, in the next slides, I will share with you the questions that are asked in the evaluation questionnaires. You can then pause and read more carefully, okay? This is about Cantrill, leather. This one about positive affection. This one about negative um, effect. And uh, uh, this one, more specific questions about uh, work. Uh, that said, uh, we can identify some proposals for public policies in the various countries. For example, promote employment, project unemployed people. We can see the impact lasts for a long time and generates social fear. Another example, provide incentives to organizations that promote employee happiness. And finally, uh, happier people find jobs faster, and happy people can lose uh, their jobs faster. There are signs of happiness in all day workers. This is another idea we need to explore. So, the last chapter of my communication and the article that I will publish later is about the figure of the corporate uh, philosopher. I used some references, uh, there are not many in the world, at least uh, they have not been released. Uh, Tom Morris is one of the most important. You have here, if Aristotle run General Motors, the new soul of business. In this book, he developed the four dimensions of human experience. Uh, on the left side, you have the four dimensions, intellectual one, the aesthetic one, the moral and the spiritual one, and on the, the left, uh, on, the, on the right side, you can see the four dimensions of human excellence in uh, a, a more concrete way. Truth, beauty, um, goodness, and unity. Now you have Lumarinov and this book, Philosophical Practice, you can find uh, in this book, uh, the part number two about modes of philosophical practice and the chapter number seven is about the corporate philosopher. As you may see, uh, I want to uh, pay special attention to the peace method already used in uh, individual counsel counseling and uh, its presence here reveals the importance that people have in the organization. Now, uh, another great reference, perhaps the one who has more publicly uh, assumed the figure of the corporate uh, philosopher. Uh, moral DNA is uh, a tool aimed at people uh, and organizations 
and with a lot of information uh, in this kind of work. Finally, uh, Luc de Brabander, um, this book, Thinking in New Boxes. And uh, um, he has developed uh, very interesting exercises to, to work uh, creativity in companies. So you, you may see, for example, this question, how many colors does the rainbow have? Um, thinking works with simplifications. Uh, another one, car is a good, a good example of, you may answer, uh, not now. Uh, Another exercise, a good example of car is, you may answer too. And uh, the second question uh, works deductive thinking. And the first question works inductive thinking. Uh, this is used by creativity, um, the first one, and the second one, it is more used on science. Very interesting to to work these uh, ideas in companies. Uh, so, um, now, uh, concerning my work in this field, in 2006, uh, I published this book in Portugal, Think Well, Live Better, Philosophy Applied to Life. And uh, uh, recently, at uh, Atlantica University in Portugal, in the chair of ethics, happiness, and philosophical counseling, I developed this philosophical diagnostic tool with 100 questions. At the end, um, it issues a personalized report on the person's level of happiness. With these reports, we prepare um, the intervention using the project method, as you may see here in the slides, uh, it is a, um, a philosophy for happiness, uh, which I presented in my PhD in 2013. At the moment, uh, we are highly interested in assessing the impact of philosophical tools of our clients. Last Thursday, in this Congress, uh, my colleague Tiago Pita and I, we uh, already presented some, uh, some results. Uh, here, just one example, you may see 26% of the clients mentioned happiness as a result of the philosophical consultation. So, in conclusion, um, to say that it is essential to promote more research in this field, it is an opportunity for philosophers, as the market needs this type of work, but there are not enough professionals. Uh, that is why we have created this post-graduation course at Atlantic University here in Portugal, and the name is Philosophical Counseling for People and Organizations. The main bibliography I used is uh, here, you can see after. And so, uh, thank you very much for uh, your uh, attention. Uh, I am now uh, available uh, for questions. See you, bye-bye.